What's happening, free game? We are coming to you live, but not live, from outside this double-decker bus, which for the last few days we have been calling home. Now, this bus is situated in a really nice, peaceful field. It's quiet here. There's not any roads nearby, so it's nice and peaceful. The only neighbours we have are some cows on the other side of a fence here in the field, and they don't mind us moving in. See what I did there? It was really nice here. We've got loads of open space, loads of place to walk around, have fun. Immediately outside the bus, we've got a nice decked area with table and chairs where you can sit out and eat, some sun lounges and some other chairs. So it's a really nice space to sit out here and rest. Good thing is as well, they've got some shelter here as well. So it means if it does rain, you can still sit out here and have your dinner or just chill out. But that's enough about the outside. Let's take you inside so I can give you a full on detailed tour of this three bedroom double decker bus. Let's go. So this is Bertie the bus, that's right, that is the official name of this bus, Bertie. What a cute name, I love Bertie. This bus is obviously decommissioned, but a long time ago it would have carried hundreds, thousands of passengers on multiple journeys around the city or town somewhere, but now it's been converted into a three bedroom home. And what I really like is that, despite the conversion, they've still retained a lot of the original bus features. So it makes it even more special, magical and fun. So immediately as you walk in, you've got a kitchenette area. We've got an oven here and even though it's small, it does everything we need it to. Got a grill there as well, two hobs. We've been able to fry up some food here already. It's been really nice. And you've right by the door as well, so you get plenty of ventilation. Toaster and kettle, absolute essentials wherever you are staying in the UK. We've had tea and toast already. For storage, there's a big deep drawer here for all of your cutlery, knives, forks, all of the bits and bobs you need around the kitchen. And there's things as well to use for the barbecue, which is really handy. Across from there, there's an electrical box in here. So if anything does trip, you can actually go in there and restart it again without any problems. And I like that they have these little areas here, which have been left for putting tickets in or holding things in as well. It's nice little touches like that, which make this really special. We've got a decent sized sink here. It's been very practical for us so far. We've got the water plugged straight into the mains here and also electricity is rooted into the mains, but there's also a solar panel on the roof as well, which is really cool, which means, you know, we're getting renewable energy, which is really good for the planet. We like to look after the planet. I really like this area as well, even though this isn't an original feature of a bus, well, I don't think it is, but having all of these pipes for this shelving unit, I don't know, it's just a really nice touch. It makes it look all really rustic, like an old bus kind of look, I guess. We've got a decent sized fridge as well. We did a big shop recently, as you guys may have seen, so we've got, managed to get everything we need in here. So it's nice that you've got a good amount of storage. Across from there, we've got additional storage with our plates and bowls and everything here, a bread bin other things you need for cooking, preparing food, and also it's good for any additional food prep you want to do if you're doing a bigger meal. What I really like about this area as well is one of these original bus features I've kept here. Not just the no smoking sign, but the bus stopping sign. Do, do they still have these on buses? I'm, I feel like I haven't been on a bus or I haven't seen one in ages. Comment below if they still have these. This one hasn't even lit up yet, which is weird considering we're stopped the whole time. So this area in the middle, I really like because you've got so much space here. It's been really nice just to chill out and rest here with a cup of tea or even a snack. I really like as well that the bus still has these original seats, reupholstered obviously, but they're the same seats you would have had on the actual bus itself. I don't remember ever them facing across from each other though, always facing forward, maybe some facing back. Yeah. So up to the back of the bus, and we all know the back of the bus is the coolest. Comment below if you were someone that always went to sit at the back of the bus because you think it's the best place to sit. We will be going upstairs to the back of the bus, which is even the extra quarter place side. But this area, we've got a nice electric fire you can put on if it gets too cold. And a really, really nice seating area where you can sit around and eat your food or just chill out. This area is huge and the table is huge as well. And it makes, I don't know, it almost gives an illusion like this part of the bus is wider or bigger. You could probably get 10 people sat around here all at once. In fact, on this entire bus, with this seat in here and a seat in there in the middle and the beds upstairs, you could probably sleep 10 people here in total. There's some nice little touches as well with the emergency exit door. Is still available, but you can't actually get out of it. So if there is an emergency, probably just best to go out the front door. So I've shown you all of the downstairs living area, and now we're gonna go upstairs to the top deck, and I can show you where all the bedrooms are. Come on. How crazy is this? Going upstairs on bus stairs. This is so cool, man. You've got the bell here as well, which has been pressed again and again and again, but it doesn't make the sound. As a kid, didn't you always want to do that? Or if you are a kid, don't you enjoy pressing that bell? But only press it when you need to get off. No irresponsibility. Here, however, press it as much as we want. 
Well, what we've learned very quickly that you have to be aware of coming up here is the low ceiling. Bang my head many, many times. With it being upstairs and with heat rising, it gets a lot hotter upstairs than it does downstairs, which is good for when you're going to bed and you want to be warm and cozy, but there are loads of the original windows all around the edge so that you can open up just to give a bit of ventilation. So there's three bedrooms upstairs. First, I'm gonna to go to the back of the bus and show you the main bedroom that we've been standing. So this is the most spacious bedroom. It has a king size bed, a really comfy king size bed. We've had some good sleeps in this already. And what's really nice as well, they put curtains here all around the top so you can have your privacy, shut off light if you want to. For storage, most of the space available is space under the beds, but we also have some hooks with some hangers that we can hang our clothes up on and any other things as well. So it's pretty much all you would need staying in this space. But as I said earlier, the coolest thing about this room is at the back of the bus at the top, which is the coolest place to be. Apart from when you have all the windows shut and all of the heat just gets trapped and it's very hot, like it is now. It's still cool, still cool. So now I'm gonna show you the second bedroom where Jojo's been staying. So with this room, not as much space, but enough space to get a double bed in so you can get two people to sleep in here. But there is good storage under the bed and there's hooks on the wall as well. And there's even a plug-in heater as well if you want a bit more extra heat. Now the last bedroom is at the front of the bus. As I said, as I was a kid, I liked the back of the bus. I felt that was a cool place, but now I'm an adult. I kind of like the front of the bus. It makes it feel like you're driving it. Do you know what I mean? Comment below if you do that. I'm sure you do. Please don't leave me alone for again. You must do. Now this is the last bedroom. And for those of you that watch all of our videos, you will know that our daughter Jamie was staying with us, but she had to go. So this bedroom now is no longer being used by her. So we've just used it for storage to put our suitcases on and other bits and bobs. But this is the front of the bus, this is the cool place. Now even though this room has the least amount of space and the double bed is just about squeezed in there, I would say it probably has the best view of all rooms on this bus. It's so nice, you can see how I look out to the fields. And waking up to see that is gonna be a good start to the day. And also the good old bus stopping sign is up here as well, just in case you're not aware that the bus is stopping. So after seeing most of the bus, you're probably wondering two things. One, where is the bathroom? And two, What's with the driver's cap? Well, I'm about to answer both of those questions. Because the driver's cab is the toilet. That is right. Come and check this out, guys. This is without a doubt my most favorite thing about this bus. I mean, who would think of doing something like this? We've got a toilet with a steering wheel. You can actually use a toilet while pretending to drive a bus. It's a dream come true, right? And even all the switches, buttons, this must have been a really old bus because I've never seen any sort of driving area which has buttons for gears. There is a mirror here as well, which makes it seem a little bit weird that you're not only seeing yourself on the toilet, but seeing yourself pretending to drive a bus while on the toilet. So that is the last part of the Double Decker bus to show you guys. As you probably noticed though, there isn't any shower here or washing facilities. Luckily, there's just a little separate shower block there that you can use and there's also additional toilets you can use too. So basically, we've got everything we need here. So that's it guys, that is our tour of this lovely Double Decker bus, Bertie the bus. We'd love to hear your comments below what you guys think about this. What's your favorite area? What sort of things would you like to have on a double decker bus if you stayed there? Any unique touches you'd like to see that might be missing from that one? We'd love to hear your comments below. And if any of you guys are new to this channel and you're liking seeing what we do as a family and where we travel, we'd love it if you subscribed. If you're already subscribed, hit the notification bell so you're kept up to date on when we do upload videos. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.